been a while since I reviewed a drift car, so this should be interesting. What I have here is one of the best looking fake models I've seen in CDT in quite a while. The Nissan 350Z, no 370Z drift car. We do have a 350Z drift car, but it's um crap. It was a code car from a while ago. And no one really cares about it. Anyway, this is the 370Z, so therefore it's 20 better. I don't know either. We already have the standard 370Z. I think it's the Nismo variant in the game. Hold on. I will just search it. Don't do that. Uh, no, that's the 2000. Yeah, the standard 370Z. Possibly Nismo. Don't know. But this one's cool because it's got, like, you know, a really overhanging rear diffuser and body kit and wing and new wheels. I'm not sure which company's special version of Nissan 370Z this is. But I do actually quite like the look of it. Even if the rear isn't really for me. Not bad. Nissan Z cars are, I believe they used to be the best selling sports cars ever, well sports car lineage ever, until the Mazda MX-5 series. The, it started up with the 240Z which was supposed to prove that Japanese cars could be good and combine styling aspects of E-Type and Corvette. Then there was the 260Z which was basically a follow up to the 240Z. Exactly the same apart from it was a little bit more powerful and a little bit heavier, so a little bit fatter. Also not as good looking, IMO. Um, then there was the 280Z, similar thing to the 260Z. Uh, amplified all the qualities, so a little bit more powerful, a little bit quicker, a little bit fatter, a little bit heavier, and also quite a bit uglier. Then there was the 300ZX, radical departure for the Z series. They did a twin turbo version and everybody that read Max Power loved it. It wasn't really a Z car though. So then in 2003, Nissan went back to basics with the 350Z. They dropped the X. Amazing. Absolutely radical departure. But it was supposed to be, you know, much more like the original 240Z. Apparently it wasn't, though it was all Americanified and rubbish. At least that's what some people said. Other people said it was amazing, so... Yeah, I, I don't know who to believe. I'd just have to drive one, but... And then I've got a 350Z they can lend me. And some private land. Anyway, after that there was the 370Z, which people universally agreed on is actually a really good car. Sort of Porsche Boxster, BMW Z4, Mercedes SLK rival. Probably better than all of them. Especially since they were reportedly really reliable. Just a shame people keep tuning them. And dropping the reliability. Anyway, there was a Nismo variant and everybody really loved it. It's actually a really impressive car. I had one in Asphalt 9 back when I played it. I used to drive it a lot. I am a little bit worried about actually getting into rigorous testing of this car. Nissan drift cars in CDT historically have all been shit. There was the 350Z Veil side drift car which was massively either understeery or spin you into a ditch oversteery. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, there was the S15 drift car. Which was really, really understeery. Like, insanely understeery. And then there was also the S13, which was basically one dab of the handbrake, and you would be at 90 degrees to a curb. They were all rubbish. Hopefully this can break the trend, but I don't have high hopes for it. So, sorry for being prejudiced and everything. Yes, I'm probably racist towards Nissan drift cars or whatever. Cancel me. I honestly couldn't give a shit. Still, let's actually make certain 
whether we've actually got a good car or not and test the bloody thing. And unfortunately, right from the get-go, at least one of my fears is confirmed to be true. It's slow. I've got this one all-wheel drive swapped, fully upgraded engine, and when I floor it in third gear... Still, still accelerating. Still accelerating. It's accelerating like it's a diesel, for God's sake. Drift cars notoriously have insane acceleration. Look at the Ford RTR, the um, Lamborghini Gallardo drift car, the, even the BMW M3, also that Toyota GT86 thing. All of them have insane acceleration, but this, this is just sluggish, dull. I'm aging while I'm driving in this thing. And I still haven't hit 150 yet. Come on, down the hill. There we go. What a rubbish piece of shit. And it's already in, up, and it's already in an uphill struggle here. Because now we've got to test it in the corners. And every single drift car to date doesn't do well in corners. They all, all of them, understeer. And often lose grip when you try and drive them quick. Let's see. Yep. Understeer because there's too much steering angle. It is actually one of the better, better handling drift cars. But for an actual car, it, it, it's shockingly bad. Look at this. No, please don't go off the track. I was only doing 70. Seriously, people that modify your cars and look at me like I'm an alien when I say modified cars are shit. This is a modified car, it's shit. This is how all drift cars behave as well because they've got stupid steering angle setups and camber and... Really? And all that just to go sideways. This thing had better be amazing sideways or else. Seriously. Bloody well better be... Are you fucking kidding me? Right, let's try it again. In fact, you know what, I'm going to go all out. That's not the right car. You can fuck off. Um, rear wheel drive. Spiky tyres, you know. This had better be good. Come on, bit sluggish. Okay. Maybe I was doubting myself. Let's try it again. Oh, no, that, no, no, no. That was rubbish. But that was my fault. Let's actually give it a chance. Right. 100 miles an hour in. Oh, dear. Maybe I was right. Come on. It's too heavy so that it swings back when you, whenever you come out a corner. You can't counter steer to correct because it will instantly just snap out the drift. And it's also too slow to get up any real speed so you can't push it sideways. And also it's really horrible to just adjust it in the corners. And then when you do come out of a drift it's understeery. Like horrendously because you've got it on the best sliding setup you can and it's not sliding properly. I hate this car. Let me see. Let me really see how much of a joke it is at an actual race circuit. Because I reckon this is going to have you people cackling. Seriously. It's not often that I say this. But genuinely, if you don't want to get this free car, don't. But you know, we'll say that for the buyer's advice at the end. Right, let's go. Just off the line. Still accelerating, still accelerating. Please. Got a break in the middle of the corner because otherwise it'll understeer wildly off the track because it's shit. Please. A little bit of power. 
What happens to having nitrous in your engines? What happened to that? 30 miles an hour through that corner. 30. Oh god, understeer. More understeer. Seriously. Get it together. 46, 47, 48, 49. 50.2. It's a new slowest car round the track record. What a load of shit. Seriously. What a rubbish thing. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Unfortunately, Drift fans, there's not really much options available in the shop right now. So, if you want a good Drift car, what should you get? Uh, uh, actually, both of the options in the shop are really good. I will admit. Don't get this. I mean, only if you want to have a collection, because seriously, often I'll say, you know, don't, don't miss this car or you'll live to regret it. You won't. You really won't. But what should you get? Uh, Mazda RX-7s, these are pretty good. Why has mine got black wheels? They look horrendous. Get your act together. Nice. These ones are always a good laugh. Right hand drive, so always positive. And very fun to just hoon around in. Or you could alternatively get one of the most broken cars in the game, the Toyota GT86 drift car. This one's just been remodelled, it looks absolutely amazing. And is also, while it does take a little bit of getting used to, a brilliant drift car. So, whatever you do, don't get, don't actually, well no, unless you really want, really, really want to collect loads of cars, just don't bother getting the 370Z drift car. Get one of these toys instead. So on that bombshell, um, uh... Unfortunately, tomorrow I will be reviewing one of the most dog shit cars in real life. Seriously, off the back of the 370Z, this is the last thing I need. Thank you for that one. Hopefully I'll see you then if you want to watch me suffer.